the role of DPOs is something that uh, Swedish data inspectionen have checked. Yeah. From your perspective, how do you see the role as a DPO? The DPO is uh, independent actually from the company. You should be a whistleblower, you should not be uh, enhanced in or tightened to the organization in any level, but you have to know the, the flow of the company. Uh, let's go back to basics. What is a data protection officer? A data protection officer is a role, a physical person, that has a controlling and advisory for the company when it comes to uh, the, the data protection issues. It's more like a whistleblower function and has to be registered at Dottingsbekonen, and that's what these companies failed on. A DPO is typically a person that reports to the very highest levels of management. Their role and responsibility is to protect the rights, uh, the privacy of individuals. So in fact the DPO has a very significant mandate. And it's not only the role of just saying something is wrong, it's also has the role of said telling we might do something about this because I've seen this. Many companies don't understand this, that a DPO um, must follow the law and has a mandate to uh, remind management that uh, the DPO must take the necessary measures to protect the rights of, of the individuals. As a consumer you have to sign or give consent, yes. but nothing about anything else? Well, Why? actually it, uh, it differs from customer to customer. Uh, they are on diff different layers. Some has uh, really taken this GDPR into their organization and doing something with it within the entire organization, using it to enhance IT, enhance the flows of information and get rid of things that they really don't need. They look into the data and think things a little bit about what do I need this for? Is it this essential for my company or is it just good to have? Yeah. Looking it, it to remove the good to have information because it usually no, adds no value. And uh, many DPOs I think today have a challenge with um, actually using this mandate because management sometimes see a DPO as blocking some uh, initiative to develop some new business service or service offering to customers and they haven't been very um, careful in protecting access to personal or sensitive data. So a DPO does just that, provides guidance but a DPO doesn't typically do the hands-on work. So it's a, it's a person who is an officer that has a significant mandate, a legal mandate, and also can report to the data. It's the point of contact to the local data protection agency, should there be an incident. So that's basically what a DPO does. So Claudio, um, according to surveys, a majority of companies uh, say that they have not fully implemented GDPR yet. I think only 20% say they have done a full implementation. Yeah. Uh, last this summer, uh, Data Inspektionen in Sweden uh, had a review. Uh, and they selected uh, government bodies, they selected some private companies, and they made what they call a general understanding if they have a DPO, a data protection officer. Now it's important to understand that not all companies need to have one. There are certain circumstances where you cannot, you don't need one. But in the cases where you needed one, 80% of them failed. And this is 
passed the 25th of uh, May when the, the law was in, in place. Over 80% of companies who needed to have a data protection officer didn't have one. Correct. Is it the difference between different types of company if they have a lot of consumer uh, or is it business to business company? I think it differs a lot actually, depending on the customers and what they are doing. Uh, the customers that I work with are very different. Some use very little information from customers and some uses very highly sensitive data from customers. So it, it differs very, very, very much. Yeah. Many organizations that should hire a DPO have challenges with uh, finding a DPO because there's a desperate shortage of DPOs on the market. And many companies that hire a DPO um, typically hire um, a lawyer that is not even familiar with the privacy regulations. And so this is a major challenge for many organizations. What is perhaps even more challenging is that uh, there are organizations that believe they don't need a DPO when in fact they do. And they are taking quite a considerable risk if they were to be audited by the local data protection authority because they can be fined up to 2% of their annual revenue for not appointing a DPO. Typically these organizations would uh, receive um, a notice uh, asking them to uh, hire a DPO as soon as possible. So if you have a customer, mm. a client, and they want to do something new, how can you assure that you're designed for privacy as a product manager? Because that's... Yeah, I, I have to talk to the entire chain again. Because it's a different... It's from a different point of view. And uh, you take the data and you look at it and then you realize, okay, this is going to be used for that and that and that. You document it. And if it's going to be used for a different purpose, you have to document it and go through it again and see, do we need new more uh, appliances? Does the customer needs to be attended again? Uh, you have to verify all the, the chain that goes from, from back, from the start again, as you have a new purpose. In the data protection officer, the data processor and the data processing assistant. Uh, the data processor uh, is the person that is ultimately responsible for all of the responsibilities around the data. In, an, in a Swedish axiobolog, it's uh, the vice president, VDN, who is in charge of the unrolling sort of business. And that, of course, gets drilled down to perhaps a CEO or something. Then you have the next level, which is when you have uh, an application or any kind of information source that is outside of your domains but within your sort of purview, then it's called a controller, that's a, the assistant of a data processor. Mm. Data. So, uh, I, I, when I heard the news about the data protection officers being missing from these companies, my, my spontaneous thought was this. Well, who wants to have this role where you have no influence and you have all the blame and you basically end up in jail? So, I thought, like, it's not very strange that they don't have any. So who is responsible for the business data, the personal information that the business use? Uh, it's actually the owner of the system, which is uh, holding the data. That's the owner of the data. And as a project manager, it's very important that you have tight conversation with that person because uh, using data in a different way that the system owner has been using it before and documented it before uh, will have other actions that he or she have to be do have to do before we can use it and continue with the project. The data controller in a company uh, as a role has already been part of the compliant officers like in banks or in pharmaceutical companies. So, those kind of companies have the, the culture of understanding that you want somebody that will take care of that whistleblower sort of effect. Uh, 
that means, and this is very important, again, going back to what I originally said, that looking at the brand and how you protect your brand, then you can create an awareness and a culture within the company that it's okay to have a whistleblower that will sort of say, that, look, we're treating this data in an improper way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is there, is there a way, uh, like a get out of uh, jail free card for, for these companies that are lacking the data protection officer? Is there something they, they can do if they can't find one? Uh, all around Europe, the same law has been implemented at the same time. And uh, for instance, in the, in the UK, they have been very, very rigorous and they already started to uh, execute a couple of those fines that are obviously popular on, on, on all the medias. Mm -hmm. uh, in Sweden, on the other hand, uh, they have taken a more lenient approach. What they did now is that they, 80% of these companies, they gave them what's called in Swedish a reprimand, which is more like a caution. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they don't fix it after that, then it could potentially be a case of then uh, uh, impugning those fines against them. But, but if they can't find someone in the company, or won't find someone in the company, is there another way to do it? Do you have the formal responsibility as a product manager, or is it something that is you should do, but not? Well, actually, as a project manager, you don't have the formal parts of it, but you have the, ob uh, to my point of view, you have to have the obligation to talk to the owner of the data what we are going to do with the data and if we have to ha if we're going to have another purpose of it then we have to talk again and verify that it is okay but it, you can never as the project manager own the data from the customer it's the customer's data but you have to have the entire the conversation so it's it's the business owner that have the the ownership of the data and we as a project managers have to have tight conversation with the business owner. Can one person have all the skills needed for the role of DPO? And what we're starting to see in the business, so to speak, is that many companies have traditionally hired a person with a legal background. And so on that basis, that person has a very strong background from, from the legal aspects. But what we are now seeing is a new set of skills which are in demand for the DPO. Because we've gone past the phase where we really understand the legal requirements and how we, how we address those legal requirements, to how we then implement the necessary controls and processes and measures and this this process is called privacy program management and there are two aspects to it one is actually defining policies and rules and procedures for managing a privacy program and the other aspect is um, um, on, a, on a system by system or business application by business application basis making an assessment of what information needs to be protected and how that information needs to be protected. You are an IT service manager yes. and a project manager, but does GDPR apply to your work? Yes, it does. How? Uh, actually, you have to take effect to the laws uh, within development, within handling data, within tests, within sending stuff back and forward to your client, because you have to think about it. What is it that you are sending and what is it that you are receiving and who can look at all this? Can you buy uh, a data protection officer as a service? In the company where I work uh, at the moment, we're initiating a DPO as a service. And it's around the idea that we have for many years worked with application management as a services. And that framework that we introduce there can be copy and paste into a DPO. Uh, you have, for instance, that the business can ask and raise internal questions to this whistleblower function. Uh, we have a, a sort of internal system that we introduce and we have also the idea that you can have as a package. So let's pretend that you have a couple of users in your new DPO service that raise issues around this. And you discover it's down to the fact that they haven't been properly educated. Then the service can pr produce also training and, uh, and other additional features and, and services for those companies. So, so it's, it's, it's more like a, even a, a GDPR implementation support? 
Good. Uh, we don't want to see ourselves as competing against the current GDPR projects. We are, as exactly as you said, a complementary sort of uh, feature that could be put as an ad hoc on top of that. Yes. And it's a challenge. We are in the situation where there is really not enough security specialists. And even worse, when, when it comes to uh, old chaps like me that have been working in this industry for 20 years, there are not that many in any type of country. There are a bunch, but there are not that many. A really large number that only work with security for a few years. And it's, it's good, they are getting there. They will get the, the learning and hopefully we are able to train them as well and learning all things, but it's, it will take some time. Uh, so hopefully we get more systems like uh, AI that could actually help us. So we are now starting to see a demand for skills within security, within information lifecycle management, data classification. How do you classify information? How do you identify which information uh, should be protected? Uh, how should we protect that information? How should we also protect the rights of the individual? And coming back to what we talked about earlier with um, uh, privacy by design, how do we start to think about privacy by design? And how do we ensure that we follow our policies? Uh, so there needs to be um, <coughs> metrics or measurements that we need to make on a regular basis to ensure that we are keeping on track and we are not um, diverging from our goals, which is to manage, manage access to, to sensitive information. So take a SOC solution, for example, <laughs> that actually could take all this information and start analyzing and help us to stay ahead of the breaches. Right now, it's that there's so many attacks going on. So I would say we could divide the world in two types of companies. Those that are hacked and those that don't know that they are hacked. And a very tiny percent that actually hasn't been hacked yet. Most of them has had intrusions. The hackers take the information, done their stuff and then left. Probably cleaned out as well. So that's basically it. There's a major shift in the skill set. Uh, that a DPO requires. Many companies address this uh, issue by hiring uh, people with these specific skill sets and these people report directly to the DPO. Or companies take in consulting organizations that have these specific skill sets to complement the skill sets within the organization. So this gives you much more work to do? Yes. And are the clients aware of this? Uh, some are, and some think that it's just a little law that you have to document where you have things. So it differs a lot actually. <laughs>